Do you want to really up your fashion game with some amazing glowy weapons? Do you want to be the talk of the town because your weapons are so much cooler looking than anybody else's? Then this is the video for you. Hey guys, Derek's 26 here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get your animal relic weapons in Final Fantasy XIV online. These weapons look absolutely fantastic, and the story quest that goes with it is actually pretty cool. This quest series can be a bit grindy, but it's not as bad as the ARR Zodiac relic weapons. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through each part step by step to make the whole process as easy as possible. So with no further ado, let's get right into the video. So let's quickly go over the requirements you're going to need to start the Animal Relic quest. You're going to have to be level 60 on the job that you want the relic for. And you're also going to need to have completed the main story quest titled Heavensward. You'll need to have the following dungeons unlocked. These are ones that are not unlocked as part of the main story quest. So make sure that you have these done. For your convenience, here is a list of the dungeons, the name of the quest needed to unlock it, and the zone the quest is in. Feel free to bookmark this bar and refer back to it if needed. Next, let's go over some of the items you could stock up on ahead of time to save you some time later. Like I said earlier, this relic isn't as nearly as grindy as the ARR Zodiac relics, but these ones need a ton of Allegan Tombstone of Poetics. Fortunately, many of the items you can buy ahead of time. So if you're considering doing this relic, I would start stocking up on some of the following items now. Here's a list of items that you can buy ahead of time. All of them can be purchased from either Oriana in Revenant's Toll or Hismena in Idleshire, with the exception of the last one on the list, the Archaic Enchanted Ink. This one is purchased from any of the Sundry Splendor vendors located in the main cities. The items with the star next to them on this chart could only be purchased with Tombstone of Poetics, whereas there are some alternative ways of acquiring the others. But I'll go into that in more detail in each section of the quest. So let's get started with the first quest in the series. If this is your first time doing an Anima Relic, then the first quest you need to pick up is An Unexpected Proposal from Rowena in Idleshire. This is a very easy quest, and you just need to travel to Ezila and speak with Artashir. After completing this quest, you'll no longer need this quest for any future animal weapons that you wish to complete, and you can just start with the next quest. If this is not your first time doing an animal weapon, then you need to start right here talking to Artashir. He gives you a quest called Soul Without Life. For this, you need to travel to Mordana and speak with Sidney and attain an Astral and Umbral Nodule. There are two ways that you can do this. Either turn in one of your ARR Zodic Relic weapons if you have one, of which I have a guide on how to do so and I will link it below, or farm some fates in Heavensward. If you turn in your Zodic Relic, it will be destroyed in the process, but you can still purchase copies of it. If you do choose to do this step, make sure that you do or have done the follow-up quest of the Zodic Relic called The Vital Title so that you can purchase replicas of the relic. To be honest, the best bet is probably just farm the fates, which is the other method of attaining the nodules. There's only six of them and they're really fast. Here's a list of the zones that you need to do the fates in and the crystals that drop in each zone that you need to collect. For me, it only took one fate in each zone and I was done. Get the astral and umbral nodule from Sydney, then head back to Ayatashire in Azila. Congratulations, you now have your animated anima weapon. The next step in the quest is fairly straightforward. You just need to complete 12 dungeons. You can do all of these unsynced, just make sure that you have your relic weapon equipped at least before you exit the dungeon. It is probably safest to just have it equipped the whole time so you don't accidentally forget to put it on before you leave. Once all dungeons are completed, head back to Artashir. You'll need to unequip your weapon, then speak with him. Congratulations, you now have your Awoken Anima Weapon! Okay, on to the Anima step of the quest. This step is where the grind starts to come in a bit. But if you pre-purchase the items to begin with, then this part can be pretty quick. To start, speak with Adashir. He will send you to Christiana in Mordona to acquire four materials for the relic. Speak with Christiana. She wants two different sets of items for each material. Here is a chart showing the material that you want to trade for and the sets of items needed for each. The first set of items on the list you can pre-purchase ahead of time from Oriana in Mordona or Hismena in Idleshire with Allegan Tombstone of Poetics. But there are some alternative ways of acquiring these also. This chart here shows the different methods of acquiring these items. These include Tribal Quest tokens, drops from the Alexander Raids, 
and either from Allied Seals or Treasure Maps. Use what method works best for you. I bought mine with Tombstones. You'll need 10 of each of the four unidentifiable items and each one will cost 150 Tombstones. This will cost you a total of 6,000 Tombstones using this method. The next set of items can be crafted or purchased with Company Seals. You'll need four each of these items. Here's a chart showing the name of the item, the crafting job, the materials to make it, as well as the amount of company seals needed to purchase them. Here's a little tip. You can now also buy the items outright from the market board and they are fairly cheap. Acquire four each of these items and take them with the items from the first set and trade them with Christiana for the four relic materials needed. Then go speak with Geralt in Azila, who is right next to Adishire. And congratulations, you now have your animal weapon. For the next step, talk to Ardashir again. He'll give you a quest called Finding Your Voice. This quest is also very straightforward. You need to just purchase five Aether Oils from Hinsbena in Edelshire or Oriana in Revenant's Toll. They cost 350 tombstones each, so this is gonna cost you a total of 1,750 tombstones. Bring the five Aether Oils back to Ardashir and make sure to have your Awoken Relic in your inventory. And congratulations, you now have your hyperconductive animal relic. Okay, this step is a little more complicated than the others, but I'm going to simplify the process for you as much as possible. To start, speak with Ardashir with your hyperconductive animal relic equipped. Then travel to Ardashir and meet with Ulan. You need to collect two types of items for Ulan, crystal sand and umbersite to create the treated crystal sand. You'll need a total of 180 treated crystal sand. Each pair of umbersite and crystal sand usually makes three pieces of treated crystal sand, but there is some RNG in the process and sometimes you end up making more than three with each pairing. This means you're gonna need roughly 57 to 60 of the crystal sands in umbersite each in order to create the 180 treated crystal sand that is needed for this step. The treated crystal sand will then be used to increase stats on your relic. Let's start with the umbersite. Attaining it is fairly straightforward. You just need to purchase it for 75 tombstones each from either Hismena or Oriana. Hismena is right here in Idleshire, so it's easiest to buy it here if you haven't bought it ahead of time. I would say buy about 57 of them for now, and if you end up needing another one or two later, you can purchase more then. Obtaining the crystal sand is different. Ulan will trade you two crystal sands each for several different item types, so you have several different options. Just note that a few of the items Ulan wants are actually no longer available. So take a look at the table and the different ways of attaining the items and see what might work best for you. But also, let me just quickly summarize some of the best ways of doing it. If you have a high level crafter or gatherer, then trading the blue crafter or gatherer script tokens are probably the easiest way for you. You get two crystal sands for each set of five crafter or gatherer script tokens you trade. So you need about 150 script tokens total. If you don't have a high-level crafter or gatherer, then there are a few different things that you can do. You can purchase Moonstones with Grand Company Seals. You need five Moonstones for each trade of two treated crystal sands, and each set of five Moonstones will cost you 20,000 seals, which will end up being a lot of seals. There are some items that you can purchase with more elegant Tombstones or Poetics if you wish, although you already need a ton of Tombstones for this relic. Getting the amber encased Vilekins is probably one of the better options. You can get these from doing Heaven's Word leave quests. They will be in the leave quest area in a chest if it spawns for your leave quest. They don't always spawn, so you can either pop the leave quest and look for the chest and then finish the leave, or pop the leave quest and look for the chest and then abandon it and start up another one. It's up to you. You only need one amber encased Vilekin for each set of two treated crystal sands. So it'll only take maybe a couple of hours of grinding the leave quests out to finish this step. I did something different. These items right here are dropped from Extreme Trials. You can grind these out unsynced if you want or buy them off the market board. I bought all mine off the market board for fairly cheap. I'll link this website below so you can look up the current price on the market for each piece, then travel to the cheapest server to buy them on. Pick the method that works best for you, then get about 58 crystal sand and then, with the umbersite, speak to Ulan and start transmuting these into the 180 treated crystal sands that you need. You then need to start allocating the stat points onto your relic. Once all the stats are allocated, 
return to Adashir, and congratulations, you now have your reconditioned animal relic. Onto the sharpened animal weapon step. And thankfully, this step is very simple in comparison to the previous one. Speak with Ardashir and pick up the quest, Future Proof. He will then send you to Idleshower and meet with Blamprest. Blamprest wants you to simply collect 50 singing clusters. And luckily, you have a few ways of attaining these. The first of these is to just buy them from either Oriana or his mena for 40 elegant tombstones each. This would cost you 2,000 tombstones in total for all 50. Conveniently, there are two NPCs that offer repeatable quests for singing clusters also. Angolette offers the quest cut from a different cloth. This quest will have you run the level 50, 60, 70, 80 dungeons duty roulette once for a one singing cluster. This quest can be done once daily. The other NPC, Amphilis, will reward you with 18 singing clusters for running the leveling duty roulette three times. You can do the leveling roulette three times in a row on the same day for the reward if you want, but the quest can only be repeated once weekly. Once you have all 50 of the singing clusters, return to Blamprest. Then back to Ardashir. And congratulations, you now have your sharpened animal weapon. Okay, we are almost there. Only two quests left for the relic. This step is a little more involved and also requires some density collection, which is similar to the light farming that is done in the ARR Zodiac relic weapons. To get started, speak again with Ardashir. He will send you off to complete three dungeons. Sam Al Hard, the Great Google Library Hard, and the Lost City of Andapur Hard. You must complete these on the same job that you're doing the Relic for, but you actually don't have to have the Relic weapon equipped. It just needs to be at least in your inventory or armory to receive credit. Once all three dungeons are complete, Ardashir will have you speak with a processing node and verification node. These can be done in any order that you want. The processing node will have you collect 15 Numite, and you'll have a few ways of acquiring them. Probably the best way is to use company seals, in which it will cost you a total of 60,000 seals for all 15 Numite, but use whichever way you prefer. The verification node will have you collecting etheric density. As I mentioned earlier, this is very similar to light farming that is done with the ARR Zodiac Relic weapons. You need to collect a total of 2,000 etheric density to complete this part. And this chart here shows the activities you can do and the amount of density collected for each. You'll need to have your sharpened animal weapon equipped for the final boss of each duty to have it count. So to make it easy for you, the most efficient way is to run the Alexander Raid, the Eyes of the Creator, on Savage Mode, unsynced. This is also called A9S. This is a very quick raid and will only take 21 clears or less to complete the farming. This can be sold at level 90 unsynced or grab a few friends to help you. You can also look to join a party finder or crate run yourself, as this particular raid is done fairly often by others also trying to complete this step of the quest. You do get an item called the Enhanced Anima Glass that you can use in your key items tab to see how far along on the farm you are. Each rune that is filled represents 200 etheric density. Once you have completed the density, return to the verification node and then back to Ardashir. And congratulations, you now have your complete animal weapon. Just a quick note, although it is called the complete animal weapon, there is actually one more relic step to do for the final version. If this is your first animal relic, you need to first complete a quick quest called Body and Soul from the Automaton NPC. You can then proceed to Ardashir for the last step. On to the final step of the relic. To start, you need to talk to Ardashir and complete the quest Words of Wisdom, which is another simple quest of dialogue and a little running around. Follow it to its end, then pick up the final quest in the relic from Ardashir. It is called Best Friends Forever. In this final step, you just need to complete 12 trials, and they are broken down into four sets. Here is a list of trials that you need to complete. All of them can be done unsynced, but you need to have your relic weapon equipped before leaving the trial. Complete all 12 trials and return to Ardashir with your relic weapon equipped. You'll now just need to buy one archaic enchanted ink. As mentioned before, this is bought at Sundry Splendors. It will cost you a final 500 tombstones. Grab it and head back to Ardashir. And OMG, congratulations! You now have your Heavensward Animal Relic!
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like for the algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe as I have more great videos coming your way. If you'd like to catch Davini and I live as we continue our journey, then feel free to stop by our Twitch channel. We're always happy to say hi and chat with you. Also, let me give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters who help enable me to create content full time. You guys are truly rock stars. If you'd like to support me and gain some cool perks, I'll leave a link below. Okay guys, I will see you in the next video.